Well, hello, good afternoon, and welcome. I'm going to have another go to try and do this vlog. Tried it a week or so ago. I suddenly realised I was given basically my best heartfelt, giving you my best emotion. I was hoping just to draw you in as an audience. Then I realised the microphone wasn't working, so I was talking to myself. Hopefully I'm not doing that today. Anyway, what I want to do is try again and tell you the story of how I had my accident but more importantly how I was looked after even before I got to hospital and, I, and that is a remarkable story I am a health worker and again so I'm proud of the colleagues who looked after me It was 20th of December last year, so 2017, where I was doing this journey, this route, but it was 7 o'clock in the morning and it was seriously foggy. I mean, like, you just couldn't see your hand in front of your face. This, you wouldn't be able to see. But, I made my way in. The reason why I was going this direction was because I was taking presents for my team. Yep, I'm a great manager, but I like to think so. I think most of my team do as well. Anywho, rolled it along here and again I'll show you where I had the accident. What I'm also going to do is probably put a warning up right now in, in telling you that some of the images I'll be sticking up will be of the damage I did to my leg. Um, there will be a before, which is quite nasty, and an after. This is where I've now got to have to learn my, um, my editing skills try and demonstrate that um, well try and demonstrate what happened. As I say it was the 20th of December, early in the morning, I was making my way along. And even though as I say it was that time of year it was very mild. Well it's 25 at the moment so it wasn't that sort of mild but Again, it didn't need much in the way of base layers, let's put it that way. And I was going along and a rabbit run out in front of me. And it was at this point um, where it was, a, it was a corner come up. You can see it's quite a straight road apart from a couple of corners. The corner come up, I didn't see the corner in time. Bike hit the curb, I went down, bike went up and it landed on my thigh. Needs to say, this is where all the um, well, the incident happened. The return to the scene of the crime. We'll, we'll get to that in a little while. Thank you, buddy. Right, you see, he's in a good mood today. Oh, it's going to be like that, isn't it? World's hardest corner to get out of. Right, so you, you're going to see the speed I'd normally do along this road. I'd like to point out, it's not the speed I was doing on the day. It's one of those little benefits of probably why I didn't die. When I was trying to do this vlog last time, um, I was talking about a rabbit running out in front of me. <laughs> it was um, one of those little moments when a, when a little bastard bunny ran out in front of me again. Fortunately, I saw it plenty of time. Fortunately, I was able to swerve safely. Um, so, me and the bunny basically lived to tell the tale. A bit like the bunny last time, we lived to tell the tale, and so did I. Right, so well, we are starting to come up to where the second bunny ran across, and I'll try and cut that one in in a moment. And we're going to see in a moment where we accident. I think it was over that corner we just gone past. Because it is winter, the grass is all different lengths. Oh, yeah, it was that corner back there. I do apologise. I forgot to nod. Sorry, Mr. Biker. So it was back there. I went up, 
quite grounded on the thigh. This is probably where I cut in the image. And I, I scooted along and as I ended up with both my feet trapped in the fences there as well. So my legs were doing their Steve McQueen impersonation um, from The Great Escape. Oddly enough I knew at that very point I had broken my leg. One of the reasons I could do that is because my foot was facing the wrong way. So that, that didn't really help. Um, so I looked at myself and I thought, okay, the leg was gone. I was in shock, so I was quite calm, which is pretty quite a good thing. Um, so I decided to triage myself, so I was looking over myself and I was checking everywhere else and the leg is gone, so I ignored that, but I checked everything else off. I took my crash helmet off, now don't do that kids, not a wise move. I was lucky I hadn't damaged myself. That should be alright. Um, I started to notice that nobody could see me. Because of the intense fog, I was um, by myself really, and nobody could see me. The bike had cut out. So there's no lights there. So I thought, okay, I'll get to my phone. Call for some help. Ah, it's become a bit of an issue. Not down too many there. Uh, it's become a bit of an issue. Sorry, just enjoyed a view. And it's lovely. And it's Sunday, which means there's going to be fucking cyclists everywhere. Um, anywho, we're getting back to the story. Sorry. I tried to get to my phone. I realised I couldn't get to it. I couldn't reach to it. Um, so it's a bit of an issue there, so the shock started wearing off and the pain started kicking in. Fortunately, uh, a builder pulled over. He, he must have seen my bike. He pulled over and he came back and he found me. And of course, he, he asked the obvious question, You alright mate? Uh, no, to me, sure I promise. No, no, I'm fairly sure I've broken my leg. Oh, he goes. So have you got a phone? He goes, yeah, yeah. So can you phone ambulance for me? He goes, yeah, it's okay. Um, by this time, a healthcare assistant had um, seen what was going on, she came up to see me, promptly followed by a physiotherapist and, and then a microbiologist of all people. So all these people were there trying to help me out, they've got a blanket for me, um, they used a teddy bear as as a pillow, I hate this corner. And they generally made me feel quite comfortable, my legs were still trapped in the fence, they hadn't moved me. And an off-duty paramedic that actually coming home because it's like a lot of health workers use this road because it's between two hospitals so yeah, the paramedic turned up as well so he's giving me the once over I was on the phone to the ambulance call centre and then they um they done a bit of a chat and I was telling about my leg I said yeah, it's definitely broken I mean I'm sure it's broken still a reasonable amount of calmness a lot of pain trust me um, and they said, okay, well the ambulance, you, you're cat free. So the ambulance will be with you in about two hours. So then it wasn't the sort of news you wanted to hear. I mean, like you're lying on the side of a road, it's it's December. I mean, no, it wasn't cold, it's, it's still lovely December. Um, fortunately, the off-duty paramedic says, give me the phone. And the ambulance was there in 10 minutes. So it, I think it was clearly demonstrated that it was um, a little bit more than a two hour wait. So uh, please turn up, I think there's some firemen in there as well, and so the ambulance turned up, so it got to the point where I said, okay, well, fair enough, well, we're going to have to cut you out of all this, I'm like, okay, fair enough, these are new boots, they're my new boots, I just spent £300 on my new boots, you're not cutting them, I don't care about the pain, you're not cutting them off, and bless them, they didn't. I can't bring you else, I find in my trousers, um, it was a little bit mild, so I was wearing a base layer and nothing else underneath. So there I have my sort of like a base layer underneath and they're coming out and they cut it up too high. So I need to say, it's, it's not one of those, it's a difficult day when your bollock falls out. And, and again, you've got nothing left to um, hide your shame anymore. It's just there. It's there whether you like it or not. So, in some respects, all that discomfort and pain and the family jewels hanging out. It's fairly safe to say it was not my best time. Oh, uh, one of you make your mind up. Thank you. So, 
I'm being treated. They get me the ambulance by which so I'm now on gas and air to help with a bit of pain. I come to the conclusion that I need to be put into a splint. Um, so they use this inflatable splint. And you look at that picture again. I'm doing so. And you look at the picture again, you, you, you can see one bone is going up and the other half of the bone is going down. So what I try to do is stop that from going anywhere near. You also see that red line. Uh, that's called a femoral artery, which I only just missed. Now, yeah, so this is probably miracle number one. If I had cut that, I probably would have died in this scene. Don't you worry, it doesn't apply to you, sir. So, they put it in a split. And it, it felt like my leg, well, my knee was being lifted up and down in some sort of mechanical pump. So my language started to get a bit more colourful, I started to feel the pain a lot more. And um, it, it was uh, not the splint that was doing it, it was the muscles. The muscles in my thighs and so on, like the contraceptives and all that, were basically pulling together. It was like it's one of those natural reactions, so basically they're, full, they're trying to stop the bones basically mangling the inside of my leg and the muscles doing everything you can to run, mangle my leg. So we got in, so I got a blue light, got to work. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it's very never but not in my normal department. A member of staff had heard about what's going on, come down to see me in A&E and she went and reported back so it looked like I was going to die. So um, that, that was slightly um, misreported in some respects, because I'd like to point out I didn't die. I think this is evidence that I didn't die. Um, I was putting old school traction by this point, so I had old metal weights hanging off the end of my leg. And I had a CT scan and I was operated on. So you'll see by the after image, around there, or the entire screen now. of the work that they've done. A number of people pulled over that roadside in the day. Health workers, not on duty, there to help out and do the best they can. And I want to say thank you to all of them, and all the people that saw me, and all the people that treat me for the following months, and I'm still receiving treatment now. Uh, they were brilliant. They were magnificent. And they did it because they cared, not for the money, it is a job. And it's not a well paid job for a lot of us. We do deserve more, but maybe one day we get what we deserve. We can only hope. But I say thank them, I say there are other people pulled up that day as well. You know, there's more doctors, more nurses. Yeah. They're there to offer help. Yeah. Not because it's their job, because they wanted to. As I say, I'm still receiving treatment now. I've got more operations to have. I'm on a lower version of the bike now because I, I need to be able to get my feet on the ground. Um, I think I might have lost a bit of leg. So I'm proud to work for the health service. I know my colleagues are as well. One of the things I have to say is I work correct bike here. And so I am today, even though as you can see it's now 27 degrees. So I suppose it's a little bit cooler than all. But it's the only area of my body that was damaged from my fire. I did not have any other marks on me whatsoever apart from the ECG stickers. So when they stick them to you, I don't have to leave a bloody nasty mark. But the accident, I had no other marks on me because of that. And again, proper bike gear. Lots can be said for it. When I was in the hospital originally, it was a, it was a trauma patient, there's a kiddie opposite me. He went off at 30 miles an hour. He had a broken femur, not as significant as mine, but that's not brinkmanship or anything like that. But he also had broken collarbone, broken wrist, broken spine, or well, a damaged spine. Um, he was eating food through a straw, 
he was in a proper state and he went up to 30 miles an hour because he wasn't wearing proper gear. I just need to think about that one. So I know this is not that good. Dead rabbit. See, I've got another dead rabbit, but it's not me this time. Always away. I know it's to say it's not the happiest of vlogs, but I mean I hope there's a message in there for people to learn. I know I've got to get people to stop watching my vlogs, um, so it might be a couple of years before anybody sees this. Oh, I understand that. But it will apply then as much as it applied now. Just say, like everybody, please stay safe. Thank you for watching. More importantly, thank you for listening. <laughs>